everyone here has lost something at one point or the other we've lost relationships we've lost money we've lost opportunities we've lost loved ones we've lost time we've lost several precious things in our lives and um, losses are tragic in nature every time you lose something the feeling is not a good feeling the difference between giving and losing is your willingness when you give you give willingly when you lose things they leave you outside of your consent and permission are we together now if i give a hundred thousand naira I did it consciously and so although it left me there is joy because I understand that I sent it into my future on assignment but when hundred thousand is stolen from me or leaves me it pains me because it was not part of my plan but as we know this by the grace of God is a house of mysteries and a mystery is a modus operandi, a, a system of operation. The kingdom operates on mysteries. And one of the mysteries that are available for the saints to be able to tap into the possibilities of God is the mystery of restoration. A provision in the dealings of God with men where men can get back things that they part with. This is the powerful thing about this our God that in his dealings with men when a thing leaves you it does not leave the earth and that there is a system that can call it back hallelujah I want to share with you four keys very quickly before we pray please aside from the maybe the minister stand let no seat be vacant um, if we have to share let's share let's do whatever we have to do it's a lot of sacrifice Key number one, you want to experience restoration in your life, you must believe that God is almighty. Now, hold on, don't, don't assume you understand what I just said. God is multifaceted in his operation. Everybody say multifaceted. When it comes to his dealings with man, he fragments himself into dimensions so that man can understand and can relate with him. Are we together? The excellency and the, the nature of God is such that until he breaks himself dimensionally, it becomes impossible for man to understand him. The dimensions of God are encapsulated in his names. They are a revelation of a dimension of what he can do. Are we together now? So Moses said, who shall I tell them has sent me? And he said, I am. Now that's a very serious statement because I am is not a name. I am is a manifesto. Are we together? Like a politician comes to tell you, this is what I can do. And so he says, who should I go and tell Pharaoh has sent me? What is your specialty, O oh God? Are you a specialist in fertility? Are you a specialist in um, agriculture? Are you a specialist in making our crops grow? Are you a specialist in war? Are you a specialist in manipulating the constellations? And God said, I am. Go and ask Pharaoh. When they were teaching you, did you ever hear of any name in your curriculum called I am? In other words, I am only limited by what you think I can do. I am. I am. There's no limitation. All the other gods that they had seen were specialists in an area. And the gods did not dapple into their various offices. If you were a god responsible for agriculture, you stayed there. If you were a god responsible for protecting the people in the time of war, you stayed there. So Moses was saying, number what are you in that list of dimensions? And God said, me? No, I'm not one of the rest. I sit in a class all by myself. I am. Are we together now? Yes. 
But then when it comes to experiencing the manifested power of God, you must, you must, you, you must be able to invoke a dimension of him. You can't invoke all of God to be made manifest in a place. Now he feels everywhere. He feels all and in all. But when it comes to his operation, are we together? Yes. The same way um, Pastor Alpha, for instance, is not a husband to his children. He can't be a husband to his children. That possibility does not exist. Yet he's a husband. But that dimension is not permitted to be revealed to the children. They can only know him as father. But there is another personality who based on a, a type of alignment can see a dimension the children will not see. Now he can be a father to his wife. But he cannot be a husband to the children. So as far as the children know, we have a great man and he's a father and they stop there. But the wife has another dimension. Are we together? So when it comes to the dealings of God, God spreads his names and says, choose which of them. And you don't choose. Your faith is the selector. You look at the trouble and the challenges and the Holy Spirit helps you to reveal, to open to you all the dimensions of the possibilities that are in God. And through faith you pick out and say, God, I want you to arise as a man of war here. Lord, I want you to arise as a restorer. The dimension of God that is responsible for restoration is called El Gibor, the mighty one. There is a name he is called. Don't be careless about this understanding. El Gibor is a revelation. The mighty one. Many men in scripture um, were called mighty. Nimrod. Nimrod Kush was called mighty. Og, the king of Bashan, was called mighty. Goliath of God was called mighty. There were kings in ancient times that had fortifications and they were called mighty. But when you call him El Gibor, he does not come as a gentle dove. El Gibor means it is like one who comes to make a statement. That's why we started that scripture. That those who pray upon you shall become a prey. Remember the Bible says you cannot enter a place except you have capacity to bind a strong man. So you must believe that God is almighty. Jeremiah 32 verse 17. Two scriptures quickly. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth. How? By thy great power. And stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. That's El Gibor, the mighty one. It is within his power. Lord, I know it's one thing for God to be willing to step into your life. It's another thing to believe he possesses that dimension. Are we together now? Yes. In Isaiah chapter 9, I think he has 9 verse um, 4, 5, 6. Give us verse 6. Isaiah 9, 6. Isaiah began to prophesy the names that this great God will be called. Now manifest in the flesh, in the person of Jesus. And he said he shall be called. His name shall be, number one, wonderful counselor. Not wonderful, comma, counselor. Wonderful counselor as a description. Number two, he says, please, um, the mighty God. There is a dimension. He is not just a wonderful counselor. He can be the mighty God. The same one is an, the everlasting father. The same God is the prince of peace. He can reveal several of these dimensions for you. Tonight we want to see the mighty God. El Kibo, the one who can arise and help the helpless. The one who can arise and intimidate every force and every situation that defies his name in your life. Number two, the second key to releasing restoration in your life is joy. Joy expressed in perfected praise. Joy 
that is expressed in and through perfected praise there is nonsense praise there is carnal praise there is devilish praise there is perfected praise it says out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained praise thou hast perfected praise perfected praise is ordained praise praise with an anointing on it like you ordain a man and the man changes your praise can be anointed and it can sustain an ability to become a weapon an instrument of breakthrough an instrument of judgment joy is a very powerful mystery in the bible habakkuk chapter 3 when you read from verse 17 to 19 the bible begins to describe what looks like the life of many believers habakkuk chapter 3 17 to 19 although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall not be heard in the stalls what is my response yet yet everybody say yet in spite of what it is that i'm seeing in spite of what seems to be my situation now i demonstrate my trust in god i demonstrate my faith in his person and ability by rejoicing yet i will rejoice in the lord i will joy in the god who is able to save me the god of my salvation i will joy your joy is 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 in hope I will joy in the God of my salvation joy is very powerful and the clearest way to express joy is in praise ordained praise perfected praise Psalms 42 and verse 5 please very powerful scripture Psalm 42 and verse 5 it says why art thou cast down all my soul and why art thou disquieted in me? He says, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. My awareness that it is within his power to help me is what makes me to praise him. Like someone comes before a king and you praise that king knowing that he's a benevolent king. He says, Lord, I have learned something about your countenance that my help is in your countenance you can smile on me that's what we call favor and so i dance and so i praise brothers and sisters listen it's dawning on the body of christ afresh the age-long neglected mystery of cheap breakthrough this mystery of praise it's been chorused by several men of god for several years but i'm glad that the body of christ is suddenly it's like a veil that is being torn and they are realizing that sorrow, lamentation, languishing, regrets, negative confessions, all of these things are programming men towards disaster. And people are learning to be spiritual now. Understanding that praise is not just about music. Dancing is not just about shaking your body. We are beginning to extract the revelation from these experiences. And it's now returning life to the mystery. Because you see, it's revelation that gives life to a mystery. A mystery can become a religious practice when there is no life. It is your understanding, the construction of your belief as you engage that mystery that makes it alive and capable of producing results. Even the word of God, the Bible says, can be made of no effect. Praise the Lord. Your giving can be made of non effect. Your tithing can be made of non effect. It is not the activity but the understanding that sponsors what you do that gives life to the revelation. That's why the Bible says, In all your getting, it says, Get understanding. Praise. Praise is a powerful mystery in the spirit. Those who have defied circumstances and said life will not make me cry for sorrow again. Those are the people who have stamped the gates of hell forever. I made up my mind as a person that if ever tears will come out of my eyes, it will be tears of joy. Tears of joy. 
tears of joy. I have grown old enough in the spirit for the devil to not make me look helpless. Listen, believers, let me teach you how to frustrate Satan. Rejoice regardless of the circumstances. The Bible says rejoice evermore. Again, I say rejoice. Satan walks in the realm of the flesh. It's his domain. So he studies the effect of situations on your faith. He studies the effect of situations on your convictions. All of a sudden you find out that there's a pain on your leg and he's studying your response. He's seeing how you are frowning at God and sending a text message to everybody. I don't know how my life is. You just finished a prayer seminar or a word seminar discussing the faithfulness of God. You just had a morning devotion learning that God is faithful and then a situation dwindles your belief to a point where you can almost curse God. Our generation is full of angry people and we do not know that our anger and the sadness of our countenance is a programming we are programming our environment to be conducive for the activities of demons apostle do you know what it means to look for a child's school fees which of you by frowning can add a single naira to his bank account see that one of the first signs of depression is the inability to communicate with joy when people are depressed they sit down they are gloomy they look older than their age and that's exactly what the devil wants you want restoration you must believe and you must start rejoicing 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 most times when you see people happy and rejoicing don't think it's because everything has manifested physically. You'd be lying. Are we together? Yes. Most times when you see people happy, they say, why are you always smiling? It's like you're not in Nigeria. Babe. You wake up in the morning and walk around the streets of our city and you find angry people, angry bus conductors, angry drivers, angry employees, angry students. Someone just gets up in the morning and is angry. He sees you laughing and he's just angry at it. Say, I will rejoice. Being joyful is a choice for you now because the Holy Spirit, the custodian of that joy is already it's called the joy of the Holy Ghost. You can choose. I have, I have made up my mind to program my environment to always project joy. Because in the realm of the spirit, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you lack joy, you lack strength. And the Bible says, for with joy shall you draw. Joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit. With it you draw from the wells of salvation. Are we together? There are people outside you can imagine in the rain but define it some persons may be there and the devil will want to just make you feel angry and say my husband or my wife delayed me i would have been inside now but i want i want you to rejoice when you rejoice you paralyze you paralyze um, in fact the bible says a merry heart is therapeutic a merry heart do it good in the similitude of medicine the same way a patient takes medicine and it begins to work on him he says in that similitude a merry heart just being happy can keep you healthy alive say i will rejoice say it again i will rejoice and it only comes alive Every time I hear your voice, it comes alive. Every time I hear your voice, there's a joy in my heart. In spite of all the sadness that surrounds me, and the joy that's in my heart. Only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. Apostle, what should I do when I hear bad news? Lock yourself. Put on a song of worship. Don't 
mind the tears as they roll. Don't mind what you hear. Begin to celebrate. What happens if the brother said he will not marry me again? I know you are human, but you are also spiritual. Whatever dimension you permit is what find expression. What if I thought I would get the job and the job is not coming? Dance and celebrate. The one who woke me up can give me a job. The one who gave me strength to write the aptitude test, although I failed, he's still alive. Listen, I'm not telling you what I don't do. I have already danced all the miracles of this miracle service. I've already rejoiced it. I didn't just pray it. I spent the night forcing your healing to arrive here. I can guarantee it arrived. Because both the pastor and the deliverer are not mysteries. We know them. <laughs> ah! May you lose the ability to wrinkle yourself to old age just because of this, this thing around. No, no. Choose to be joyful. Choose to be joyful. Lord, things are not like that yet. Tomorrow by 9 o'clock, my landlord is coming. My landlord has already told me, you can go to church, but 9 o'clock is me that will wake you in the morning. Lord, what should I do? Even if you cry, he's still coming. So why don't you rejoice? Are we together? Apostle, I thought that my son, you know, would, 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 my son would, would get a very nice job. I thought he was working only to find out that he's been five years without a job. We are dying in this family. Apostle, I did not even eat. I came here hungry. Brothers and sisters, it's joy that will put food in that plate. Your anger is pushing that plate far from you. So bring it closer by rejoicing. I have a very big God who is always by my side, a mighty God by my side. just wasting our time. This is the foolishness that brought us thus far. Hallelujah. I don't like dancing. I don't know how to dance. The Bible said to whom much is given, much is given. Even if all I do is this way, God knows is a is my widow's might and with all my heart. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Some of you, some of you, you know what you did after you took one bottle of beer when you were in the war. So we just have two minutes, Sam. In two minutes, I want us to share this
bless, bless, bless yourselves. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let me have your attention. I just want to explain something. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. It's all right. Yes, yes. Take it easy. When it's time to shout, we shout. When it's time to listen, let's listen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If we, if when it's time to shout, we shout together. But when it's time to listen, let's listen so that we can allow God step in. Before you sit down, I just want to tell you something. Listen. You see, most times, most times, the difference between carnality and spirituality is not necessarily the action, it's the revelation. The same way someone can just shout and waste his time and just a show of youthfulness, another person can shout with revelation and that alone can be Tehila, the shout that will bring down Jericho. Are we together? Now, I know that we just took two or three minutes singing and dancing and jumping before the Lord. I want you to know that God is not a man. Please have this revelation. Are we together? Some of you, you will sit down now and check and find out that certain situations have gone. Some of you, in that, in that, in that rejoicing, you will be amazed to know the release of angels and the ministering spirits going to correct situations in your life. You must believe this. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a minute. Let me just tie it up and we'll pray. My spirit is fired up. This praise did something to me. Joy. Joy. Brothers and sisters, learn this. Be ever joyful. Don't jump today and dance and rejoice. And five minutes later, after service, you are frowning and acting as though it's not God that you came to meet again. Make it a disposition. Not just an emotional thing that happened in the night. The third key, very quickly, that provokes restoration in the life of a man is sacrifice. Key number three, sacrifice. Let me tie it quickly so that we can pray. Sacrifice, First Kings 17 from verse 7. Oh, really, verse, verse, verse 1, to, 1 to 6. First Kings 17, we'll read. Or if we do not have time, 17. And it came to pass after a while, he said that the brook dried up because there had not been rain. Read on. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, go down to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water. Number one, she's a widow. Number two, trying to gather sticks. Obviously, Elisha knew that it was a time of famine. Are we together now? It will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now. Make me kick first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I were saying 
will just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You will even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread. His lunchbox and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience, luxury today, so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. Few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion the lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left only one ear and two legs that was all that was left yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb what will you do with one ear and two legs eating the intestines eating all of this but in the realm of the spirit it is not what left you that is the issue it is what you have left what you have left is a sign that god is still interested in restoration that's why everything did not go are you hearing what i'm saying most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting oh god this one left me a relationship left you but your health is still with you that health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship 
your job left you but your praise did not leave you that praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job are you getting the, uh, the way this thing works there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. Hallelujah. Yes. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad. But by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right. All of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach, but can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your praise. 
lost my job, lost my wife, lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. He said, ah, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will he come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and Co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job kept listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job 42 verse 10 when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration, engaging the prophetic, specifically prophetic utterances. Let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight. Isaiah 42 verse 22. Please give it to us, media. Isaiah 42 verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. All of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non deliverance, for a spoil, and there is no advocate that prophesies to them restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic. Either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an Amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me breakthrough. I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever 
does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen. And anybody and anything that came out of Abraham. A sad story later happened. And then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry you can go into five years ago pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. 
Jesus was passing a city called Nay. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead. Her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute. Bring down that coffin. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen. You are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21. I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me. But this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea. That brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen. Please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happen in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8. Oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what.
what is wrong with your life? Your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed. And something happened. You can't tell what it is. But that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help. My help. My mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life. pregnant now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move he's dead just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes I believe God I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation he will always be alive the Lord will perfect things concerning jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. It's a weep not when the book is open. Tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you travel so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. is able to restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night God said that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can't come back. I've lost my peace, can't come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch me wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. 
I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call. But it's still in the
very fast I'm seeing shoes in the realm of the spirit and the Lord is telling me people will wear them now this is a sign of restoration too Lord where are they let it happen now there is a grace for performance grace for performance please bring them out quickly please ushers you should know this we are saving time please quickly he says grace for performance right now in the name of Jesus
to relieve itself in your present. You think about your failure of primary school. Now you are a graduate, but it has still sponsored your lack of confidence. In the name that is above all things, one more time I pray. Anyone here still connected to his past? I come in the name of Jesus, the one whom I serve. I provoke an anointing from heaven. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of 
Jesus. May that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence. Category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State. Yes. Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This is what I'm saying. Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. Because I'm seeing a car. And that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Akure. That's what I'm saying. Yes. The Lord is going to change your life totally. Right now. Who is Lekho? Listen, just one touch from the Lord will change your story. Lift your hands. Lay come. Overflow. He's in the overflow. Where are you? Please stand up, my brothers. Stand up. What's your name? Lay come, sir. From where? Ekiti State, sir. Stand here. Your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. Lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's standing, huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully, before by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or August? Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. My brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just 
must bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you, something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus and bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Sandia, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. Hold on. Who is this one? She's my sister too. This is your sister? Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Where is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. Yes. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes, Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. Correct, sir. That's what correct, stand up. That's what they correct, told you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because you people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You are a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting here. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon the Ukechuku. Is it Ukechuku or Ukechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the MC Kathy. Federal Medical Center. Yes, Kathy. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at Cape. Oh, I you were there at the, at yes, the meeting. You were the part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. 
I release that grace and activate your spirit man by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, he will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Hi. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. is coming. You wore something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. Lord is said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. Out of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
children look small here, but I'm saying, hold on, hold on. They are here. One is, who is this one? These ones are your children. I'm looking at this one. Is she married? She is married. Because I'm seeing a ring. And I'm seeing a ring, but I'm not hearing the sound of a child. And the Lord is saying a child should come now. Two years. Two years. Two years. Where is the person? Come. Call the person's name now. No children. Two years. No children. We are going to pray. She's not here. This is your son. This is the one here in the Okay, you're standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now? She will come back and testify here with the child. I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You Lisa. believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. Lisa. In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, meet him. He's the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Peter. Sometimes, diabetes, hold, ulcer, I will pray for you. you have fibroid, yes. you have diabetes, yes. you have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this, then her own children, barrenness. Then this one, there's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman, there's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Is that true, Mama? Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Plato State. We live in Kano. Mumta Nebokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yana na Kano. We have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. This is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. Also, diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and also, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. A loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now. Never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Before we pray for the sick, I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the 
influence of any spirit. Please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. within the ages of maybe 1 to 11 now as I'm praying the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting I'm seeing this is this is some demonic diabolic thing I'm not saying the child is bad I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me father wherever this child is I pray for our children now whether it is an initiation whether it is anything occultic and I decree and declare right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ Wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother. The power of God is going to come on him now. Overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. 
the fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point. Now, while we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please. I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That thing. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke. Um, some of these funny things. You are here and. You are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside, or inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit to speak in place. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop no matter what you do. That's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate it. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia.
apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. They are still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody to got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says... For this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy that this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it, and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We forward it to the um, prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, yes, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, yes, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord 
somebody outside. I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday, still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I curse. Oh, you are standing here for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus as a point of contact as it's happening to you let it happen to you and hold on don't go ah, okay you are directing them okay we decree and declare have i prayed for you gentlemen in the name of jesus all of you are my friends and by the power of the holy spirit we break this addiction from your lives join me and say amen pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. And mentorship, there is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking God, they are watching. Those who are sick in body, overflow one, two, three, inside. Make your way out. Make the Bible us to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy. We will continue to do it. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it. Now, please look up. We are going to do two things very quickly. Um, overflow 1, you can go to your projector stand. Overflow 2, your projector stand. Overflow three and every other one four, just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jimmy will be outside overflow one. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Femi overflow one. He's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to overflow two. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him overflow two. Overflow three, Benga and Promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using 
to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. by faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith. Believing. Believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. Shabratukasi. We still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of wonders. Shabbat. Let the angel of the Lord spread. Now arise, O Lord. Will you come to your rest? Let the arms of your mind. As we close in your righteousness, we celebrate. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus that every request that is upon this altar tonight in the presence of your people let it be turned into speedy testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I ask you to arise in your might visit impossible cases beginning from right now impossible cases I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ let the fire from heaven turn this request some of them humanly impossible requests into testimonies I stand upon this request and as I match them in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever I declare that they remain under your feet forever. I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray. There are those online, their requests we connect by faith and I prophesy that the same fire in this place will visit your requests in the name of Jesus. 
those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer they are delivered from death those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer they are declared a success Lord turn around age long captivities you declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration I prophesy that anointing upon this request restore oh God restore oh God restore oh God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let there be strange restorations right now in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I want to pray for you this is the last segment I want us to connect our time is gone we'll do this very quickly please lift your hands as I pray for you Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare right now, every dry book, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances, dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus let tonight be the last night you will see it let tonight be the last night you will see it. he said these Egyptians that you see today you will see them no more forever I command that you see them no more forever in the name of Jesus Christ that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking. Every grace that is, is still dormant within you. Whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. Shabras kata pakata kata kata, shekete kete kete, ma prato so do 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 pa shekete ne. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not walking in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution.
position right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. 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 Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful. Do us this gift in the name of Jesus. There's the power of God in this room. Just this room. There is a strong anointing presence of angels angelic presence mighty angelic presence just across the world. hallelujah listen to my story and while i began to minister hallelujah when i finished ministering bishop oyedeko walked in and when he walked in he was about to lay hands on me and in the dream shadrach just standing where he's standing right now he came just like some of you who watched the impartation that he did to dr paul and enche so when he held the jar with the anointing oil he fell off shadrach fell off so i ran and i grabbed it and i was praying and telling the congregation passionately prepare yourself something is about to come upon you and so i got down on my knees and he was you know how he shouts like releasing everything from the depths of his heart and while that was happening i was down on my knees and while i was down on my knees he poured the oil when he poured the oil on me he shouted this was a prophetic shout he said be blessed i take you to a new dimension of wealth be blessed be blessed that was a prophetic pronunciation be blessed he kept prophesying it be blessed it was a dangerous encounter be blessed he said you have been faithful with little be blessed he said i bless you and while he spoke there was such impartation from my head to my toe my head it was it was such an effulgence of power I knew that I made contact with something in the realm of the spirit. It was such an impartation of power. And I also know that it was an anointing for enlargement. It was an anointing for expansion. A mysterious dimension of increase and expansion. Until this evening I had not recovered from that encounter. I woke up under a dense cloud of God's power god's glory my life is full of encounters this is what the apostolic ministry is about that you open up doors you open up gates and i'm about to prophesy before i start teaching would you open up the gates gates open up the doors Open up the gate. Open up the door. Open up the gate. Open up the door. Ah, yeah, 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 Open up the gates. Open up the gates. Father, over your people. Open up the gates. Malalalamos. It's a season of light and dominion. Lift your hands as I release something upon your life before I begin to teach. Listen, I want you to believe me. We're not just talking stories. Please, I need somebody on the bass guitar. Lift your hands. You will take something this night. You will take an anointing this night. You will take it everywhere. 
I see the angels of the Lord at the count of three I will release it standing in this apostolic office my God and my King whatever it is that you deposited tonight at the count of three I command the angels that work with my anointing I compel an impartation take it take it take it take it take it outside take it take it outside take it angels of fire take it impartations of power light I open your understanding shake it shake shake Light, let there be light, light upon your spirit man, light, fire upon your candle, fire upon your candle, light, I open your eyes in the spirit. To understand that which the spirit will be communicating tonight. Something must happen to your life tonight. Something must happen to your destiny. This is Bethel, the place of bread. This is Bethel, the place of power. This is Bethel, the place of dominion. And God appeared to them in Shiloh. every power every force every entity lift up your heads all ye gates lift up your heads although it's a financial series but I command healing I command deliverance I command breakthrough right now right now every power keeping God's people down tonight take your hands of the people of God go 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 by the fire of the Holy Ghost by the fire of the Holy Ghost hello in Madonna
your holy name and sing your praises forever and I forget not your benefit thank you Holy Spirit thank you Spirit of the living God your presence is heaven to us this is all that we have Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time I prepare for this meeting, there is always one prayer that I pray. That God will open your eyes to see where you stand all the time. Because if you can recognize will know that his presence is here Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him no man is able to do this this is not Joshua Selman I have no business with what is happening hallelujah we glorify your name Hallelujah. Father, tonight, bless us. Open our eyes to see something powerful. And I pray that this will not just be Pentecostal activities, but that something will enter our hearts that will last us a lifetime. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. Those who cannot sit down, just let them, let's, let's get into the word. At this point, you can sit anywhere, on the ground, anywhere. Just find somewhere and sit down, please. There will be mighty impartations tonight as I teach. Although I'm teaching on finances, it is because of the character of what the Spirit of God will be doing tonight. We're rounding up the series on financial dominion. And it's going to be an amazing explosion of the spirit in this place tonight. So everyone, while you're sitting down, please be your brother's keeper. for the sake of those who came outside of this city you see when people see things like this they get very touched some get very shocked and this is the kind of thing most people want to see in their ministries and most people believe pastor can you imagine that? most people believe that the way to get it is by just sitting to covet an anointing really let me tell you the truth there are certain things that you will enter that realm you will not even know you have entered the bible says eye has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of any man 
what God has prepared not for prayer warriors not for them who are fasting them that love him there's something about the love of God when you love God beyond power beyond ministry beyond rema beyond revelation whatever it is nothing can replace your love for God not fasting not prayer I don't care if you pray for 100 days and fast for one year there are many prayer warriors who are far from the presence of God because they are only praying as a way because they have linked the anointing to prayer so many people pray as a way of priming the spirit the spirit is a personality he's not a robot he has emotions he can feel the heartbeat of a lover we love you forever we love you forever we love you forever Beyond anointing, beyond prosperity. Forever. We love you. Forever. We love you. Forever. Beyond our successes and our failures altogether. We love you. Yes, we love you. We love you. Forever. We love you. Whether you bless us or not, it doesn't make any difference as far as our love for you is concerned. We love you forever. We love you forever. When a man is getting married to a woman, they tell them in sickness and in health, for better, for worse. My point is not whether you believe that thing. But you must get to that point where your fraternity with the spirit cannot be compromised by anything in time. Take every other thing from me and leave the love of Jesus and I have enough. And I mean it from the depths of my heart. See, this is the secret of the presence of God. The Bible says in John 14, 21, he says he that keepeth my commands is he that loves me and when he loves me my father will love him and we will come to him and manifest ourselves to him hallelujah i was looking for a particular message i had searched for it online again and again and again i couldn't find it and then i went to sleep and in the dream the spirit of god took me to my laptop and i found the message and he played it for me in a dream completely i didn't find the message in the physical but in the dream i had the message that's the greatest key i know the love of god i don't just mean the lust you have for what he gives uncompromising passion if you never bless me in this life I won't say I won't be angry but leaving you is not an option my bond with God is greater than a salt covenant it's greater than the covenant between a mother and her child I love him forever I love him forever I love him forever. You know why the Spirit of God is moving us towards this direction of the love for God? Because we are talking about one of the greatest things that can kick the love of God out of our lives. Mormon. The only thing that God, that is compared with God, He says you cannot serve God and Mammon. That Spirit. That has caused men to go to hell that spirit thank you Jesus financial dominion part 4 we're rounding up tonight blessed be the name of the Lord we have come to the end of ourselves take over Jehovah we have touched 
the end of ourselves Hallelujah, hallelujah We have come to the end of ourselves Hallelujah, hallelujah We have touched the end of ourselves So take over, take over We have come to the end of ourselves Take over, take over We have come to the end of ourselves Hallelujah we have come to the end of ourselves Hallelujah Hallelujah We have come to the end of ourselves This is the kind of experience with the Spirit that makes you very powerful in the earth realm. It is these kinds of people that the Bible speaks about that He reproved kings for their sake. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, nor do my prophets. It's not just one who is called into prophetic ministry. No. There is a level of intimacy where you truly become the bride of Christ. And it becomes his responsibility as a husband. Hallelujah. Financial dominion part three. Help us, Holy Spirit. When we began this series in part one i'll do a quick revision of part one two three for those who are just coming by the way please help me celebrate my friend and his lovely wife pastor pete rock the senior pastor of house on the rock mina hallelujah thank god and we want to celebrate prof too he's been away for a while thank you sir hallelujah Pastor Williams has been missing in action. <laughs> it's good to have you. And Mr. Ojele, thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I said it is very wasteful and even disastrous to give people information they are not prepared to receive. Hallelujah. Remember when we started this series, we didn't even talk about finances at all. I said to us that it is wasteful please and please i encourage everyone if you were not here part one two and three you need it is a very comprehensive series and it's already blessing a lot of people and please try to get it it's free there is no reason why you shouldn't get it hallelujah and i told you that the secret to receiving anything in life is number one you must recognize the need for it God is not committed to giving you anything you have not expressed need for. He met blind Bartimaeus and said, what do you want me to do? What else does a blind man want? He can want money. Hallelujah. And then number two, you go for knowledge. Number three, you take action. Then we spoke about the concept of wealth and prosperity. Remember? That was part one. And I said the word prosperity comes from the word prosper. And it means to do well hallelujah prosperity means to possess a means an ability or power to meet the needs of mankind regardless of what those needs are and I told us that in the kingdom please listen when we talk about prosperity there's the general sense of prosperity that we address in the business world and there's kingdom prosperity our focus in this teaching and always is kingdom prosperity i told us that according to the word of god there are five areas you must do well in to be called prosperous remember what's number one come on now help me number one spiritual prosperity number two mental prosperity number three bodily prosperity the prosperity of your health number four financial prosperity number five relational prosperity if you fail in any of this area you are not prosperous according to kingdom standards so you see that financial prosperity is just an aspect hallelujah of kingdom prosperity and i i did talk a bit on them i told you spiritual prosperity means to be born again filled with the holy spirit and then to understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom 
and also to conform to the image and the character of Christ mental prosperity means that your mind consisting of your will emotions and intellect are well developed and deployed to improve the quality of your life hallelujah spirituality does not negate the use of our minds hallelujah and then bodily prosperity means to be free from sickness to be free from diseases to be free from infirmity alongside yokes and all oppressions of darkness and then we define financial prosperity as freedom from poverty please listen lack and the effects that come with them you must add this if poverty did not create any effect we will not concentrate on it our major focus the reason why we are waging war on poverty is because of the effect hallelujah it means having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it that's financial prosperity it's not having financial abundance anybody can dash you money but a supernatural ability that can replenish it and can sustain it that's financial prosperity and then relational prosperity having quality relationships that give you opportunity to express love and care to improve yourself to learn to share to affect and if and impact lives hallelujah we define financial dominion and you'll find that even relevant today we've defined it in every um, of the parts financial dominion is the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring this is what we define as financial dominion financial dominion is not having money financial dominion is the ability to conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and we listed some effects that come fear insecurity greed self-centeredness unrighteousness i'm just trying to recap very quickly hallelujah and then part two we talked about the anatomy of god's economic system remember the internal workings we examined how the kingdom works and the first part was the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom can you remember why god blesses us what's the reason reason number one to live a comfortable life number two to finance the cause of christ on earth so winning the building of god's kingdom kingdom financing and i did say that it is god's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities what that means is that there are kingdom financiers those called specifically into this apostolic ministry of being distribution channels for the kingdom but everyone is supposed to be part of providing financial supplies for the building of the kingdom hallelujah and then number three to reveal the love of god this is why god blesses us so you must understand why believers are blessed in the kingdom if you do not understand you are not entitled to the blessings of heaven to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical and a definite way this is where we talk about helping the poor the hungry charity community projects nation building acts of love and kindness that defy religion gender race and social status hallelujah i mentioned something very important that wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement it's not an accomplishment it's a trust hallelujah then we spoke about the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance remember very very important the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance this was still in part two we spoke about the law of tithing and that's the law of open heavens we spoke about the law of seed time and harvest then we spoke about different um, givings in the kingdom offerings in the house of god kingdom investments we examine the concept of first fruit prophet offering vows and sacrifices and then we taught on the principle of seed faith remember the principle of seed faith um, then 
the week before miracle service that's part three we went to the natural laws of wealth and prosperity and i told you that the problem with the body of christ is most times we stop at the spiritual laws we just teach people how to give how to tithe how to sow and so on and so forth and then they don't know what to do hallelujah they do not have that wisdom that understanding that ability to make to manage and to multiply their financial resources hallelujah so favor brings finances and lack of wisdom takes it out of believers so we must examine the natural law and there was one scripture proverbs 18 verse 16 that was the core scripture the gift of a man makes room for him remember that and brings him before great people we spoke about the concept of money we spoke about the concept of value and i told you to replace that word gift with the word value a man's value will make room for him and bring him before great men i told us that there are three things we need to experience financial dominion number one financial intelligence number two financial planning number three financial discipline financial intelligence means the understanding of the structure and the workings of money how does it work and then financial planning the distribution of your wealth remember our 30 70 principle remember god savings investment and then our expenditures then we spoke about discipline it takes discipline to stay through and follow through everything and today i'm going to be teaching something very very powerful hallelujah i'm teaching tonight on how to become wealthy that's the last part how to become wealthy well what you want to call wealth creation I actually wrote in bracket here becoming a money magnet there are some things we cannot talk about here this is not a business class investment mentality financial vehicles multiple streams of income debt free living three to five year plan for wealth we may not have all the time but I'll be talking about how to create wealth and you will be so blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ amen first Samuel 17 please first Samuel 17 from verse 22 to 27 blessed be the name of the Lord we have to rush first Samuel 17 verse 22 to 27 hallelujah is projected so let's just save time and David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper can we have King James let's take away the new James or amplified. Thank you. And David left his carriage in the hands of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. 23. And as he talked with them, listen, behold, there came up the champion. Everybody say the champion. The Philistine of God, Goliath by name. So that was the champion out of the armies of the philistines and spake according to the same words and david heard them and all the men of israel when they saw the man who was the man the champion so he was not just an ordinary man the bible called him the champion are you getting my point please listen i want to share with you a very powerful principle they fled from him and they were so afraid verse 25 and the men of israel said they were talking to David now, the small boy. Are you getting my point? He was a teenager. Have you seen this man that is come up? He said, surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed that champion. Is, it, is, is that in your Bible? The man who killed the champion. The king, whoever that king is. So this award was going to be given by the king. I told you wealth in the kingdom are you are you understand what i'm saying wealth in the kingdom is not just an achievement it's a trust the king that means the king is sitting on his throne waiting for something are you getting my point the king has wealth the king has all kinds of blessings he said but the king is waiting please get this revelation 
that the man who killed him, the king will what? Enrich with what kind of riches? Great riches. And will give him his daughter, goodness, and make his father's house free in Israel. All of these blessings for whoever has the gods to confront a beast called Goliath. You will be blessed tonight. I'm about to blow your mind with something God shared with me. Goodness. Look at, see, look at this. A ten-footed beast is just roaring and threatening these people. And the Bible did not lie. You know, I like the Bible because it's fair to all men. It called Goliath a champion. Bible called Goliath a champion. Meaning he was a man who was killed. He was a man who had mastered the art of war. And when the nation of Israel saw him, together with their warriors, the Bible says they were afraid. And then the nation of Israel said, I mean, they, they spoke to David. David just had, and that whoever noticed, they did not put gender. They didn't put age. Is somebody learning something? No gender, no age. It didn't even say if the person is, a, is an Israelite or an Ishmaelite. He said, whoever can kill Goliath, the king has vowed that he will give him great riches, one, give him his daughter, access, connection. Uh, just follow me. It's not just about a woman. Are you getting my point? He will give him wealth. He will give him his daughter and go to his family and make them free. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, because he didn't hear well. He said, eh, what did you say again? Let me hear. They said, what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine? Notice, David did not call him a champion. He said, what shall be done to this Philistine? And take it away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of God? 27. And the people answered him after this manner saying, so shall it be done to the man that killed him. Help us tonight. Open our eyes, O God, and let us see what will get us out of certain realms into new ones forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Genesis 41, please. We choose your way. We choose the way of wisdom. Genesis 41 from verse 33. It will be a very fast reading. I just want to build on this and then I'll talk. Genesis 41. Are you there? Now, therefore, this was Joseph speaking. Look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep the food in cities. 36. And let the and that the food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt and the land perish not through the famine 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants 38 and Pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this a man in whom the spirit of God take note I want to connect certain dangerous things this night and then we'll pray in whom the spirit of God is 39 and Pharaoh said unto Joseph for as much as God has showed ye this there is none who is so discreet and wise as thou 40 thou shalt be what immediately thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than thou 41 and Pharaoh said unto Joseph see I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. 42. 
we're reading to 44 and pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck 43 and he made him to be to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of egypt the last verse and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of egypt thank you jesus hallelujah we began to talk about the concept of value hallelujah that your value is measured by your ability to solve problems is that true and to provide solutions the bible says the gift of a man the value of a man he didn't say it can find room he said it makes room that means before then there's there's no space the value the gift of a man can make room and bring that man before great people hallelujah i'm teaching tonight on the reward system of the kingdom how to be wealthy the reward system of the kingdom how lasting wealth is made managed and multiplied hallelujah everybody write this word down problem and write this word down to solution Aaron, good to see you. You're welcome all the way from Abuja. Bless you. Problems. This is a word that many people hate, but tonight I want to make you fall in love with it because it holds the key to your financial destiny. Say amen. Problems. People hate that word problems every time you hear of a challenge or a problem we run away from it and we do not want to be associated with problems hallelujah but let me tell you a few things that will bless you you're ready to write I'll dictate them number one until there is a problem you are unnecessary until there is a problem you are unnecessary I want to tell you some facts about problems until there is a problem you are unnecessary look up if you are not hungry you do not need a chef or a cook is that true if you don't have a patch in your tire you don't need a vulcanizer is that true if you don't need your hair to be done you don't need a stylist or a salonist is that true if you're not sick you don't need Benny him is that true if you're not lacking wisdom you don't need Mike Murdoch are you getting my point if you don't need deliverance you don't need Dr. Dickie or Lukoya are you getting my point so everyone the moment you mention the names of people the problems that they solve is what you can remember about them when you talk of tiger woods you talk of something a problem that he was able to solve in the sports area or an impact that he was able to make solving problems and providing solutions this is the irrefutable key this one big key that holds the financial destiny of so many people i'm not talking about the kind of wealth that just comes as guesswork you don't know how it came you don't know how it sustained you are even afraid of the wealth because you think if you lose it you will never have it again remember we said financial dominion or financial prosperity is not just having abundance but the ability to replenish and sustain it hallelujah until there is a problem you are unnecessary number two the reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems the reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems that's 
how the reward system of the kingdom functions hallelujah now look at me whether you sell the solution or you give it free the reward system of the kingdom says every time you solve a problem a reward must come to you whether you sell it or give it free it doesn't make any difference are you getting my point now this is the justification for a pastor being rich if he does not sell the teaching none of you paid money to enter here is that true what is the reward of the person then if he is giving free what is the reward of a philanthropist there is a law the reward system of the kingdom whether you give out the solution free or you sell it the moment there is a dispensing of a solution from you there is a trigger notice what it said in first samuel the king had given a decree whoever takes care of goliath immediately the king starts acting are you getting my point and he will give him great riches and his daughter and set his family free hallelujah so the reward system of the kingdom is not just built around prayers trust me i pray but i'm telling you the reward system of the kingdom is not going to come by praying and fasting 100 days alone the reward system of the kingdom is not built entirely on favor are you getting me now lots of people like favor i love it too but let me tell you sustainable wealth is not built on favor through wisdom is a house built by understanding it is established and through knowledge the rooms are filled with every pleasurable thing hallelujah many people in the body of christ i said it the week before miracle service while we're dealing with patri that many pastors do not even know why they are rich they think they are rich because they are serving god yeah that's true but it's not so they are they are wealthy because they are offering spiritual value are you getting what i'm saying now there is a transformation happening to you right now as i'm speaking to you i'm opening you to understand the structure of the kingdom are you getting my point now you are receiving impartations i am dispensing to you so my reward is tied to my solving problems if pastors knew this they will know their prosperity is not tied to their members and they will stop yoking members with all kinds of things gimmicks here and there if i teach you the word of god in truth and sincerely as a minister of the gospel I'm teaching in sincerity and truth and I am not blessed then God has lied the reward system of the kingdom are you getting me now do you know why I'm teaching you this because not everybody is called into the fivefold and the way pastors have taught the prosperity message you will need to be a pastor to prosper by that message what if you don't have a crowd are you getting my point but when you understand that the reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems we are going to connect it with the personality of the holy spirit in you and you will see why every believer should not be poor hallelujah number three a problem is an invitation for a reward the problem a problem is not an obstacle that comes to kill you every time you see problems around you around the society it is God inviting you for a reward a problem is an invitation they saw a champion that cannot be conquered David saw a Philistine he was interested in knowing the what and what would happen hallelujah challenges and problems are an invitation to be rewarded this is how the kingdom is built pharaoh had a problem it was an opportunity for the lifting of joseph is that true daniel came as a solution the king had a dream no one could interpret it no one could even he could not even remember it but daniel came he solved the problem are you seeing that in scripture 
don't just think those guys were just selected by God to be rich just like that they solve problems whoever kills Goliath the king gives great riches and sets his family free are you learning something tonight a problem is an invitation for a reward number four I just want you to write these facts down the problem you solve decides your significance in this life the problem you solve decides your significance your significance is not tied to your background it's not even tied to your ability to speak in tongues your significance in life is tied to the problem that you solve that means that you are not insignificant because of your background and so on and so forth jesus was born in a manger a few people came but when he was exiting the earth there was a crowd watching him had nothing to do with nazareth hallelujah your significance is proportional to the problem that you solve your relevance and your significance is tied to the problem you solve that means every time you find yourself suffering from inferiority from complex prayer is not the only problem there is something you can do that can bring you out of that realm and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon there is something you can have that will make the king send for you and they will bring you out of certain realms is god speaking to someone tonight I just want to bring these points the way they are and I pray that you recognize and appreciate what I'm sharing there are some of us that in our families we are not the firstborn but aside from our parents we are the ultimate determinants of what happened in that family you know why because your significance in that family is not just tied to the age and the hierarchy it's tied to the problems and the solutions that you are providing hallelujah praise the lord let's continue the problem nearest to you is your exit out of your current season the problem nearest to you every time you say lord where is the door out of this problem out of this situation start looking at the problem near you that's the finger of god saying get out this is your door I was teaching the students in the school of ministry and I drew a door. Those who are students here, what did we call the door? Problems. That's the name given to the door that brings great men out. What I'm sharing with you may sound very simple, but trust me, this is why there are lots of broke failures in the world today. The problem nearest to you is your exit from your current season notice you are where you are today your limitation is the limitation of the solution you provided last and if you do something higher you will rise out this is powerful this is profound watch this to the glory of god and with all humility this ministry is at the level that it is according to the progressions of the solutions are you getting my point now i was i was at pastor pete rock's place last week it was a wonderful moment by the way please celebrate him him and his wife they treated me so well it was it was a wonderful time i went to preach for him at his um appreciation appreciation um service and it was wonderful when I went there and I saw the expansion within a period of two years the expansion the increase the excellence I said this is it it's a law it's a law it works are you getting my point now when people come with results you know why there are so many of you sitting here and inside and outside some of you came as critics some of you came to confirm what you had 
some of you came because something happened to somebody around you and you could not deny it it was too notable are you getting my point now some of you vowed the first time you heard of koinonia you warned yourself warned your friends warned everybody here you are you know why because it's a dark world full of needs this keeps us in the market forever are you getting my point now our advantage is the darkness of the world this is what keeps us in ministry that's why the bible says when you see darkness arise and if you shine very well even gentiles will come to that light and a time will come kings kings will see people coming this is how a church grows this is how god showed me gentiles first come a time will come it will be so notable kings will start coming see it that's what the bible said gentiles a day will come kings will come are you getting my point now and it will be a privilege for them like sheba they will come with their gifts to honor the excellency of the wisdom and the hand of god upon your life i want you to know that prosperity is not a myth it's not a legend it's not a miracle it's not a mystery it's a formula gentiles gentiles do not come to see you they don't care about you it is your light they are coming from and kings to the brightness of your rising hallelujah i just shared with you a powerful revelation i have some deep revelations that the holy spirit put and he told me one time i had a vision pastor and i saw lots of white men it wasn't this meeting i don't even know if he was in this city a lot of white men people coming and i saw all kinds of gifts and rewards and i was flattered i was wondering i said goodness and god said you just continue what you are doing and see where it will end you do you know this is how great men started nobody gives you any guarantee to start ministry you don't find a thousand members signing form and say just start it's not political party that says i will vote for you there is something that gives you an audacity so when there are three people you can be preaching you know that the world is too dark for you to be ignored so you can criticize a man your problem will push you you may hate me but there is this treasure god did it in such a way you can't take it without me we must go together if it's in a plane we'll go together Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a very big God. Oh. He is always by my side. A mighty God. Oh. By my side, by my side. There's one part. Satan come out for oh yeah. There are two ways to bind the devil. One is by prayer. Another is by revelation. There is an understanding you can have. That makes the presence of Satan become a mirage in your life. It doesn't exist anymore. Believe me. Somebody's spirit is fired up. When you ask God for a new season. A new dimension or greater significance. He will reward you by empowering you to provide greater solution. Are you getting that? Every time you say Lord I am tired of where I am. Take me. He won't just come and just lift you vaguely. He will empower you to solve more problems. So when we start praying and say, Lord, bring increase for us in Koinonia and bless us. God will give us an ability to raise only three dead people. Do you think there will be increase? Three dead people alone, confirmed. When that happens, you will come here 12 o'clock and sit in the overflow. Let me tell you something get what i'm saying it's a very powerful principle it has nothing to do with ministry it applies in every area of your life remember the story i shared with us can you remember the story in enugu is in enugu one of the places pastor there was something like a bomb blast and muddy water started coming out of the ground and it was healing the sick when when jake sent the video to me and i watched it i started i i first felt sad but later on i started rejoicing it is our turn to shine hey 
it is our turn to shine no devil will stop it it is our turn to shine it looks like this is arrogance it's not arrogance it's confidence that comes from something that is not even of myself remember i shared with you two scriptures i'm about to connect because he said upon daniel was the spirit of the gods if you have if you catch the revelation of what i'm sharing you can sit down with a cup of gary and be dancing like a madman because you know that it's a matter of time you are getting out of you will snap yourself you will make sure you you document it because the book you will write from it alone will bless you money is not a miracle nor is it a mystery but a reward for solving problems money i insist is not a miracle if you get miracle money your bank account is a sign and a wonder it's just a language god is speaking become a master's problem solver a master problem solver and you sign out of a life of poverty forever become a master problem solver just write what i'm telling you you are either a problem solver or you are a problem yourself you are either solving problems or you are creating them you are either solving problems or you are the problem yourself hallelujah when god wants to promote you he gives you a greater problem to solve write this and style it you will need it in your life when god wants to promote you he will give you a greater problem to solve so when it was time to announce david goliath showed up other people were seeing an obstacle david was seeing a door he said i didn't know it would be this fast for me to be blessed i didn't know it would take 24 hours for me to be announced what reward and they told him your family will be free you will have a wife without toasting her you will have great wealth all for free he said come on give it to me where is that mountain <laughs> hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying The size of your Goliath determines God's confidence about you. The size of your Goliath is an expression of how much God has confidence in you. Some of you are already thanking God for what you are going through. The size of your Goliath is how much God is beating his chest about you. Jesus hallelujah the size of your Goliath failures in life are those who run away from problems never run away from problem it's like repeating a class hallelujah never run away from problems it is your exit out of your current season I told you the size of your Goliath determines how much God has a confidence. God has confidence. And then the size of your throne is determined by what kind of Goliath you kill. The Bible says above thrones, there are different kinds of thrones. I'm sharing with you very simple and powerful things problem solving providing solution hallelujah this guy is playing this keyboard he's solving a problem he's providing solutions it's easy to look at Don Muen and see what he's doing and say he's ministering but wait till you get into trouble 
and then you will see how much his songs can comfort you you will be forced to buy it that's why they never go out of the market because they didn't sing their opinion they just sang the word of god which abides forever you see that so a song that was sung in 1980 they know it will still be relevant i can i can i can sing a song that is dependent on my understanding at that time and it will expire when i grow but when you sing the word of god directly that was the secret of people it's still a secret of people like panam Paul. lord we are sorry people keep saying we are sorry forever because of the stubbornness of the inhabitants in the earth so that's a song that will sell forever you will need it at one point of your life see that welfare department has zobo and donut immediately after the grace some of you are going to carry your 50 naira or 100 naira and give them you don't even know the face of the person you are giving because you are not interested there are some of you you don't know i want to ask you a question what is the name of kenneth copeland's church who knows the name of his church very few how can you not know the church of a popular man i want to show you something powerful what is the name of Benny Hinn's church? Who knows? What was the name of Smith Wigglesworth's wife? You don't care. All you know is the problem they solved. That's what remained with you. Are you getting my point now? Are you getting my point? It's amazing. Some of you don't even know the full meaning of ENI, and frankly, you don't care all you know is that you came for miracle service something happened to you and you gathered your whole family members and brought them and you said some of you just said that meeting in cgc you don't even know the name and you don't care and you beat your chest and say i'm a proud member and truly you are some of you may not even know my name and frankly you don't care all you care about is the solution trust me if you stop getting blessed here for one month it's not that you hate me it's that you are desperate about your problem being solved you will corner you just find somewhere diplomatically the disciples were with john the baptist when jesus showed up he did something one two three they said john it's not like we don't love you but we are designed to look for solution are you getting this that means you do not look for money it is attracted you never try to look for money it's a quest that will end you in futility something brings it when the king sends for you hallelujah this is one of the greatest secrets also of a blessed ministry when you are anointed and the people are blessed the ministry will enjoy financial supplies from those impacted is that true say in the name of jesus i have an ability to solve problems say in the name of jesus there is something i have that can bring financial rewards when they employ you listen every time you see vacancy that company is telling you we have a problem can you solve it are you getting me now that's all they are saying vacancy there is a problem we have and you now apply in other words you are telling them i have the ability to solve that problem and they say let's test praise God all right when they are interviewing you they separate those who are going to create problems from those who will solve the problems and they tell those creating the problems will get back to you there is a way you can become a money magnet and it's not by being a money monger listen it's not by putting pictures of money all around your room like a fool Go and remove it if you have that kind of thing i know some of you have read the law of attraction and it's taught you 
godless things that one will take you to hell you don't put money all around your room some of you you have it in your laptop you when you are lying down you just put it around and you just listen to all kinds of useless songs that's not the way it works it doesn't work by covetous that is lost that is a craving that will kill you solve problems solve problems stop praying lord give me money say lord give me an ability to solve problems that's the prayer give me an ability to solve problems give me an ability i told you the problem close to you is your nearest exit the nearest exit a thief makes money without solving problems it's not solving any problem but it's making money that's why it's wrong a corrupt and wicked politician are you getting my point now makes money by siphoning from the resources if you are not solving a problem and you get rich sustainably you are doing something wrong you see the reason why those who send you all kinds of emails i was teaching the students in school of ministry when we we're talking about finance this is to announce to you you won two two million five hundred dollars huh some of you have gotten emails like that some of you are even hiding others now you are still processing it don't waste your time those things are scams from the pit of hell it doesn't work like that that's how someone can stop you at the park and tell you come there's one money let's go to xyz all kinds of gimmicks happen in nigeria because people do not know how blessings come hallelujah it looks too simple for others to be blessed but for you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom that this thing there are spiritual laws that bring you into this truth that bring you into this thing and when you solve problems you open a gate for a dimension of blessings you may not be able to explain i see this happen all the time by the grace of god we are counseling people every monday and it keeps increasing it keeps increasing we almost get embarrassed on mondays because people have to sit at different places you think people will just travel from other states and just go to sit outside people sit under although we are working on it but people can decide to sit under a tree and sit for hours from morning to evening to see a man for five minutes you think people have that much time to waste everybody say becoming a solution there is something that can happen in your life that will make you prosperous this is the ability that uncommon ability to solve problems now turn with me to deuteronomy 8 18 and you will understand what the bible has been saying deuteronomy 8 18 Thank you holy spirit help somebody in the name of jesus everyone please read is projected just write and let's save time one to read but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that gives you does it make sense to you now what does he give you what is the power to get well are you getting my point so what does god give you wealth he gives you an ability and the bible says that ability can help you get wealth he gives you the power to get wealth what is the power to get wealth it's not favor the power to get wealth is not favor there is the esther anointing there are other dimensions but that's not the power to get wealth the power to get wealth is what came upon jacob that made are you getting my point the ability that made him solve a problem for laban laban kept him he said i testify that god has blessed me for your sake what kind of technology happened at the riverside that made animals to start multiplying because they were looking at water are you getting my point now elisha had such an ability to solve problems naman carried gifts they carried everything 
See, that's why prophets, men of God in ancient times, they knew their worth. He sat inside the room. He said, who is this man? King, send him and let him know there is a prophet in Israel. Is it that there is no man that can solve a problem? And the king had to come and wait outside. Kings to the brightness of your rising. And he said, servant, tell him to go and bath seven times. That's all. That's the solution. Man said, you mean that's the solution? He said, you can sit down there and waste your time or go and bath. And he went seven times. And when he saw, listen, I want to show you a powerful principle. When he saw that he was clean, he was too grateful to remain there. He came back with gifts. This is what will always happen. It is the reward system of the kingdom. Are you getting my point now? The reward system of the kingdom. When they were looking for money, Jesus taught them a parable. They needed to pay their tax. And he looked at Peter. He said, Peter, are you not a fisherman? Go to the river. Solve a problem. Get a fish. Open the mouth of that fish. You will see money inside. Are you getting my point? That means the money is tied to your gift, to your ability. Open the mouth of that fish. There is money inside. Are you listening to me? Could it be that where you are right now is because you have not identified a solution you can provide to your world? This is the reason why you are suffering complex. This is the reason why when you stand before men, you feel inferior because the world has not seen what you can give yet. They've had your noise. They've had all kinds of things. No sick body has been healed from your hand. You have not given anybody any wisdom, any proof that the wisdom of God works in your life. Every time you solve problems, you attract money, you attract God, you attract people. Every time you solve problems, because every problem you solve has millions of people looking for the same solution. They will look for you. That's why we can criticize how these people are still lining up, queuing up in front of shrines. Let me tell you, if God gives you an ability to heal only HIV, you will have the largest church in the world. Only HIV guaranteed with proof every time. Only HIV. If wheelchairs come, you tell them you can worship with us, but don't expect anything. Just HIV. People will let it work. Just let it work. People were so desperate that the Bible says when Jesus entered the city, it was noised. It didn't tell us those who noised it. It was noised abroad that a problem solver had come. He entered the house of Peter. His mother had a fever and he just rebuked the fever and she got up. Jesus became so famous, so blessed because he was solving a problem. He solved the greatest problem of mankind. This is why he sits on a throne and has a name that is above every other name. See, God did not just give him the name because he was Jesus. I hope you know that position had been vacant through the ages. That was the contention in Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's. It didn't say it's for Jesus. It's the Lord's. Whoever takes that title will sit on that throne. And the Bible says, when he conquered death, he rose up. A coronation was held on his behalf. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down on that throne until all your enemies become your footstool. And now he has been given that name. The name is not Jesus. The name is Lord. It's an office. The ultimate conqueror. Because he solved the problem. What is the problem? Oh death, where is thy sting? He conquered death. He conquered hell. And he conquered the grave. What are you conquering? If you have not conquered anything, don't blame God for, you, for any poverty around your life. What are you conquering? Whose problem are you solving? God is asking you a question. You will never excel in anything you are not gifted talented anointed or trained for gifted talented anointed or trained these things must happen you either be gifted talented anointed or trained say i'm a problem solver 
say it i'm a problem solver in the name of the lord jesus i'm a problem solver never run away from a problem a problem is an invitation to a financial reward system the purpose of conversation is to reveal a problem and solve it this is why people talk hallelujah i sit for hours and all i'm doing is talking with people and praying and they don't just tell me their names they don't sit down and say joshua selma what is your hobby or what color of shirts do you like the moment they sit down they tell me there is trouble sir and we hope you can help us hallelujah the world is full of pain and they are willing to pay anybody who can solve it no matter how small the world is so desperate that even if you are fake you can be blessed from it they are so desperate people don't verify they are desperate even when they perceive value they pay for it there are prayer homes you drop 30,000 no stories it doesn't matter what your problem is from headache to death you drop 30,000 straight from the outer court even before you see the man of God and there are hundreds of people that troop in day and night they don't mind hallelujah can I tell you something people will pay anything anything any price there are people that left Abuja this morning there are people that come in every week from Kaduna every week from Kano there are people who have come all great distances because they believe there is a solution are you getting my point now that means you remain relevant to the degree to which you continue solving problems and you grow in it you grow in it you grow in it there is a kind of problem we will solve that will attract kings kings to the brightness gentiles come to your light but it's the brightness that attract kings they have seen light but when they see it rising it becomes too notable the wise men saw a light and they started following it they went to the house of the one who had that light they saw a star and they started following the star if the star took them to egypt they will go if the star took them to bethlehem they will go if the star anywhere they were not concerned about the distance they said we want to know who made a star to rise like this and the bible says they that be wise daniel 12 verse 3 it says they shall be like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness like the stars even forevermore i refuse to be a failure i found my way out of failure forever in the name of the lord jesus christ listen you can be soaking gary right now and know that is a matter of time there are six billion people there is enough room for everyone there's no room for competition at all there are too many problems are you getting what i'm saying thank you jesus every hospital that is built has people because there are sick people hallelujah Whose problem are you solving right now? Whose problem are you solving right now? If you solve the problem of a millionaire, you have access to his millions. This is what makes us powerful. We can solve the problem of the rich, the poor, the blind. Hiya. Let me not go faster than myself. A businessman can only solve the problem of poverty. A doctor can only solve the problem of ill health but a spiritual man come on now a spiritual man now he has an anointing and has an ability that makes him relevant in all spheres if pastors knew this we would not relegate ourselves to look like idiots who are just relevant in church come on now there is an ability of the spirit that can make you stand anywhere and communicate the counsel of God with wisdom they said what wisdom is this Jesus spoke to politicians. Jesus spoke to doctors of the law. Jesus spoke to laymen. He had the ability to multiply bread, fish, whatever it is. I have an ability. I have an ability. 
I can document my persuasion in a book and lay my hands on it and it will bring bread to my table. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's why a thief is a fool. He mocks God by stealing. With the problems in the whole world, when a man steals, it's a mockery to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Write this down. The power to get wealth is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer. Just write, I'm still speaking. The power to get wealth is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer to possess uncommon abilities to provide solutions. The power to get wealth, this is my definition, is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer to possess uncommon abilities to solve problems. Not to solve health problems. Not to solve demon problems. If it's a wisdom problem, there is an ability. If it's a leadership problem, there is an ability. If it's an entrepreneurial problem, there is an ability. Are you getting my point now? Let me tell you, if you know this, you will honor the Holy Spirit with your life. Play with the Holy Spirit, you play with your financial destiny, among other things. Your presence is heaven to me. Very powerful song. Your presence is heaven to me you see why i value the presence of the holy spirit so much take the holy spirit away from me i'm as useless as as a chair or a chair that is broken for me the holy spirit is not a pentecostal part of me the holy spirit is my life he's the only reason why i know i can be relevant to my generation the only reason He has put a treasure inside of you that can make the whole world look for you. Hallelujah. Everybody say in the name of Jesus, there is an ability of the Spirit that is at work in me that empowers me to solve problems, that empowers me to be creative to provide solutions for the problems of mankind and it brings me into a realm of consistent unending financial reward take everything i have today i will get it back it's a matter of time all i need is the presence of the holy spirit and the wisdom of the word he will give you an ability this is what makes you a money magnet There are some of you that came with seats after the service you are coming to bless me with. It's not pride. And this is not the last time it will happen. It will keep happening again and again because there is this treasure. Everybody say there is this treasure in earthen vessel. This is why I give him glory. You see why I worship him? Because if God does not add any other thing to me, I don't he doesn't owe me anything he's given me everything it now makes sense to you why the bible says he that did not spare his son but offered him freely will he not much more give you all things and he said i have given you the holy spirit what else it's because we think the holy spirit just makes us pray in tongues the holy spirit will be relevant in every area of your life hallelujah when they employ you and you solve such problem to an extent that they look at you and they forget about what you studied there are people who work in lagos but live in kaduna the company pays their flight ticket twice or three times every week they are not complaining and they are not tired because without them the company will die when you become that kind of person no i don't care what cause is in your village are you getting my point that 
that partnership with the Holy Spirit will bind the devil by himself. A day will come. This thing you see, the crowd here will only be one department in E and I. A day will come. We will keep solving the problems bit by bit. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us, distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us, those who pack sewage, your sock away, you laugh at them, but they are solving problems. Everybody goes to toilet. And he will keep going to toilet every day. Predictable business. True or false? Is that true? I was talking to the school of, school of ministry students the other time. And I told them if I'm to establish a business at that point. I will establish a public toilet. I won't look for, for pure water and all of the Public toilet. Sooner or later everybody is going to need it. I don't need to market it. I just need to keep it there. You will look for it when the problem becomes serious you will look for it it's a law you can make noise you can cut what you can smile when problems get serious people become desperate for solutions hallelujah this is swan water are you getting my point did anybody create water some people just sat down and calculated and they knew that man about is it 70 percent or there about of our body am i right it's made up of water good business that means you need to replenish it otherwise you will die and they simply package water are you getting my point now and they are making money they've been doing this thing for years till today they've not run out of money because there are six billion people goats drink water cows drink water hallelujah are you getting my point now there must be something what is business business is simply packaging your ability to solve problems so that you can meet a targeted audience and you receive financial reward that's what business is Business is not about CEO first class. Business is the art, the ability to package your value, to package your ability to solve problems. If you write a book, you now see why Jesus, excuse me, why Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. You are the salt of the earth. He gave you a clue to your prosperity. He said you are the salt of the earth. He said you are the light of the world. I carry this consciousness every day. Pastor, one day we will stand before kings. We will snap before kings. It will be an honor for them to snap with us. We are not going to go begging. Men of God, we will return back the dignity of priesthood. Not go around chasing politicians. They will look for us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. I shared with you my story. I think one time when we were having one financial series, I went to one bank years ago to go and beg for a loan. They embarrassed me, they harassed me, they insulted me, they disgraced me sent me out and i laughed come on now i said one day is me and the manager that will enter and i'll go straight to his office and while i'm drinking tea they will be talking business with me it will happen banks look for men of god to give them loan without collateral they call the name of the capital human capital where your presence is greater than one thousand acres of land your presence is heaven to me there are some of you when they employ you 
they are not going to use the normal timing to promote you again you will be too relevant there will be an ability of the spirit in you are you getting my point you will put your salary by yourself believe what i'm saying are you seeing the reason why there are many struggling youths around stop struggling master the art take advantage be like nehemiah with one hand hold the sword with another hand the ability to build the world will look for you skilled people are scarce genuine people are scarce gifted people are scarce don't take for granted that because you are gifted everybody is gifted gifted people are scarce hallelujah praise the lord banks are running around looking for aliko dangote running around looking for ted dollar and all of these wealthy people to give them loans they are running running from others running to others i will run to god so that every other thing will run to me it must run to me everything gravitates around its origin i will run to god and every other thing must run to me say i have an anointing let me tell you what you have very quickly what do you have please write there is always what you have and when you can use what you have it is enough there is always what you have number one you have integrity right things that can add value integrity your integrity can solve a problem you may not have naira and kobo but you can build yourself and have integrity number two wisdom number three understanding there is a difference understanding the comprehension of how things work in the kingdom this is called understanding the dynamics of the operation of the kingdom is called understanding and this is part of the ministry of the holy spirit isaiah 11 verse 3 it says and it shall make you of quick understanding that's what was given solomon an understanding heart it was an understanding heart that made him wise number three number four you have gifts and skill your giftings whether from your degree whether from your talent this guy can play keyboard hallelujah there are many of you that can sing tosin you can sing you can play keyboard when you sharpen it enough you'll be amazed hallelujah there are many of you who can speak on common oratory the ability to communicate with precision that's your exit out of trouble that's your exit out of inferiority hallelujah there are those that God has given leadership acumen the ability to lead there are people in this place at least I know them who have written books and their books are about going out of this country pastor we will write books he will put an unction upon us we will write books that nations will read it will solve the problems of nations it will solve the problem of governments say i'm a world changer say it with conviction i'm a world changer there is an ability in me i can never be poor because of the presence of the holy spirit in me you must refuse it your ability to solve problems and to add value to humanity day and night i say this with all humility this is just a bit of my private life people interrupt my private life with all kinds of gifts at this level where we are just starting you imagine what they would do to you jesus was just born just born they brought gifts just born 
just born they brought gold frankincense and man he was just born there is an ability that we have koinonia listen to me inside and outside god is speaking to somebody you are not a known entity you may not be able to speak english but there is something you have the world will excuse your inability to speak because of that thing you have are you getting what i'm saying some of us here who are students your lecturer may have insulted you you are looking at your cgpa 1.5 2.0 or you graduated with third class or pass and you are saying i'm finished don't mock god come on now you have more than that there's too much darkness don't mock god there is a wolf prosperity the world is too dark they need you they will die for what you have hallelujah die for what you have every time i wake up in the morning i rejoice because i still wake up with his wisdom at work in me i still wake up with his anointing at work in me when i'm about to counsel people shortly before they start entering i say thank you lord the wisdom is there i didn't refrigerate it i don't need to cook it this morning to work i don't need to prime it is there it's resident inside of me and i tell the people begin to come one by one and i am amazed to see the hand of elohim tonight we are going to pray esther had something to offer many people look at esther's weak beauty but they do not know that she had courage courage if i perish i perish that was courage and with that courage she solved the problem there is someone god is speaking to do you know that if you start that restaurant you will solve a problem you have been complaining that there are many people there are plenty who told you there are plenty you know how many hungry people are in this earth everybody if i eat your food a sign that is sweet is you should see me there again if i buy chair from you don't you don't need to see me there after two years and god has been speaking to you start up that restaurant and you are there complaining and grumbling this is an elderly woman i'm speaking to and god is speaking to you hallelujah there are many of you that your hands are gifted your hands are blessed there is an anointing upon your life there is something you can do stop calling yourself adolescent stop calling yourself young adult it doesn't exist an adult is one who is not a child as simple as that once you are not a child you are an adult whether you believe it or not hallelujah everybody here has an ability to solve problems you have wisdom you have integrity you have grace if you don't have anything you have an anointing of the spirit you can educate you can teach there are schools that are resident in many of us right now schools that will be built there are homes there are institutes there are leadership institutes there are real estate moguls that are sitting down here some of you are just sitting down the bare land you are seeing in nigeria that you call a village is your inheritance that's where god will keep you and you will shake creation with your wisdom there are inventors there are all kinds of people sitting down listening to me and god is speaking to you and then there are men of god those who have been anointed to push back the darkness as if satan does not exist and we will keep doing it whether we do it free do it free don't ask people to pay for anointing you still mock god they can pay for your products they can pay for 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 your book or tapes and cds it is based on this revelation we can give all our messages free you know why because god will still reward us it is the reward system our concentration now is to bless you let me tell you the truth when you are blessed some of you some of you tomorrow you are the ones who will come and sponsor you will set up a whole studio for eni you will do it single-handedly as a show of gratitude thou shall remember the lord thy god for he has given you the power to get wealth what did he give you the power that means it's within you right now 
if you are born again the power to get wealth is within you let me tell you the name of the power to get wealth the ability to solve problems say it the ability to solve problems sweetheart you make bed sheets stand up please this lady makes beautiful bed sheets she made one beautiful bed sheet for me do you know how many people will be willing to buy that bed sheet matilda and sandra they started i think and ella also they started making zobo three days ago yesterday they received 200 percent increase on their business because they started they focused on adding cucumber flavor to their zobo i took it school of ministry student did you take it respond you are looking as if you didn't take it hallelujah when welfare started making sobo here they started making money stop praying give me money stop being angry with your uncle be angry with yourself provoke yourself to to get out of that season hallelujah there are so many people who can address listen listen this is very important there are so many people right now who have the ability to solve the problems in their homes hallelujah extra moral center do you know that there are people who can have an extra moral center huh? an extra moral place that teaches twenty five thousand in abuja people are paying over twenty five thousand just for lesson are you so dull did you get a in english why are you still sitting down you know how many people are struggling to get c in english imagine that you have an extra moral center packaged with excellence and you are teaching people just maths and english that's your own don't go and teach french or or crs no i know you're a christian just teach maths and english and tell the people don't laugh i'm very serious i want to challenge you because you are going to pray shortly tell the people guaranteed maths and english for your work Twenty-five thousand. if you have 10 students you don't need a mic 10 students how much is that Two hundred and fifty thousand. that's what somebody in the oil company receives that we call a big boy am i challenging you there are some of us you have big laptops in your in your rooms and your homes you're just watching it you have one desktop can you not set up a business center set up something in your room you don't need ac forget about that false life people are not they, they don't want to know if you have suit or you can speak english can you print can you type that's all they care about there are some of you that are makeup consultants it's just that you are average you are average the only face you make up is your own you can rise to excellence people pay thousands of naira and dollars so that they can make them up i'm showing you that the power to get wealth is resident within you you will have to stand up he said awake thou that sleepest and christ shall give thee light there are some of you that cook you can bake but you don't want to improve yourself your wealth is there there is power to get wealth are you listening to me there are some of you god has blessed you with some small money hundred thousand five hundred thousand two or three of you can come together buy a golf buy a golf work with either the protocol department or anybody get responsible drivers put it on the road pastor the person that drives me with just within last year within last year he changed his car twice he just takes me on charter around twice there are many of our parents that cannot afford 5,000 naira to eat well at home but they have over nine cars scattered outside one the tire is on top of the car the other one the the the, the, the suspension has scattered can't you fix it and patch it and put it on the road anything that is in your life that you are not using and you are not putting to use is a waste hallelujah There are some of you you can even start even if it is akara and pap you see the problem with nigerians is 
this fake life that we have listen to me if you don't repent from it you will die a broke failure i'm not insulting you i'm just challenging you someone can buy a shoe of forty thousand huh buy a suit of of hundred thousand do you know how much the people who make akara you know how much they make in a day some of you after this coin on your right now you are marching straight there you alone you will buy over 300 naira akara yam you eat part of it today wrap the remaining eat it in the morning they make money every day some of you can go into retailing go into retailing retail pure water i'm challenging you i'm not the kind of preacher that will just tell you take take receive no no rise up and be productive solve problems and be rich hallelujah are you listening to me there are some of you sitting down here you have two or three clippers in your house how many heads do you have how many times do you bab in a week flamboyancy that's not bringing results in your life if you carry one of those clippers and you go and put it give somebody go and rent a shop around hallelujah popcorn machine there are about forty thousand students in abu samaru campus alone how many popcorn machines do we have i don't think they are up to 20 in that whole campus how many saloons ladies how many lady heads do we have at least 10 or 20 thousand how many saloons do we have i'm showing you how believers do not rise up to take responsibility. car wash car wash a car wash joint some of you can have a car wash joint i didn't say go and wash cars set it up and get people you think it won't work they gave you scholarship of two hundred and fifty thousand. you went around because a lady said she likes you you went and did unwise things with the money now she has left you the money too has left you these are all the the careless things we do around the truth is for some of us god has been faithful to us some money has come in here and there but we are just careless we don't think we spend we eat it and eat our destiny if you eat what you should eat tomorrow today you will die of hunger tomorrow hallelujah poultry poultry pastor my mother started poultry with about 20 birds i think day old or week old birds 20 but today my mother's poultry is enough to feed the family who is god speaking to tonight that the power to get wealth is resident within you the power to get wealth is resident some of you are graphic designers you are excellent you are just sitting down hoping that one day you will announce yourself where is the one day the media department is looking for excellent graphic designers are you getting my point they are paying people some of you make shirts my friend Ejimi, it was in this zaria a point came he was taking contracts of about 1.2 million every year guaranteed to make shirts shirts that you make creativity some of you plot you are just not serious you plot as occasion serves you when someone wants to plot and you are saying i'm watching film because you have not seen that he can employ you and bless you hallelujah do you know that this work that the protocol is doing there are there are institutes that are logistic is that true pastor when you are organizing crusades weddings or programs you contract it aaron is here aaron works with a, a a newspaper company in abuja but aaron also has his company third lord productions they are into event management so don't be angry when you see him blessed it's not just praying in tongues he's solving problems together with victor they have managed they have managed a lot of weddings that happen in this area 
some of you have that ability the power to get wealth God gave it to you some of you are excellent editors you are so good some of you are brilliant you can set up a school you can set up one of our one of our people in the prayer band here Josiah he spoke to me and we spoke with him right now as I speak to you he has set up a tutorial center where he's serving it's called Zenith educational center I, I guided him helped him and prayed on it he has set up a tutorial center Zenith tutorial center look at the beautiful name he brought one kind of name for me I said what is all this It's a tutorial center give it a beautiful name Hallelujah. Is God speaking to somebody here? What do you have in your house? You will use that thing to solve a problem and get yourself out of here. In the next five minutes, we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Please, I want everybody to pray. We are wrapping up this session and we really are going to pray. You must crystallize this that I'm teaching you. Hallelujah. Instrumentalists, help me in the next five minutes you are going to cry and say lord that ability of the spirit that is locked up inside of me that thing that came upon me when your anointing came you can keep falling and rising falling and rising falling and rising and nothing will change but tonight i want you to pray there is something you have your musical ability the anointing god has given you lift up your voice and begin to pray I like you to pray, pray, Koinonia. Shake it, take it, baba, 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 baba. Shake it, take it, break it, leba. Sam branta kataba nalaba. There is an ability of the spirit, an ability to solve problems, an ability to solve problems where there is no problem. You are insignificant where there is no problem outside inside cry to god some of you are crying on behalf of your family you are saying lord this is it my father may not be working my mother may not be working what rod have you given us oh god what rod have you put in my hands Show me, oh God, open my eyes, oh God, open my eyes, oh God, open my eyes, oh God. Show me where the treasure is within me that can feed my generation, that can feed my family that can bring me to relevance please pray hallelujah hallelujah please pair yourselves into three if you can you're going to pray i like you to pray for the next few seconds radically in tongues you're going to say lord i call out that grace that treasure resident within my brother within my sister go ahead and begin to pray lord we call it out entrepreneurial grace we call it out creativity we call it out Ministerial anointing, we call it out. Leadership anointing, we call it out. No room for laziness. It's a season of prosperity. We are taking advantage of the power of the Holy Ghost at work in us to solve problems.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lastly, you're going to prophesy upon your life. You're going to say, I'm a bank of solutions. I'm solving all kinds of problems. Lift your voice and pray. Prophesy it. No more inferiority in my life. I found my way out. There is something I have. Pray. Prophesy to yourself. I have wisdom. I have integrity. Prophesy. I have business acumen. Leadership skills. Prophesy. Shake it, shake it, never go so break it, never run out of us. Prophesy upon your degree. It's not a waste. It's not a waste. Prophesy upon your masters, your PhD. It's not a waste. God can use it to bless you. You can solve problems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please write the following books down. I want to recommend a few books for you. If you can get them, that will be great. Is Jordan around? Hallelujah. You brought the school of money. Please bring it. 10 M's of money. Matthew Ashimolo. A few books that can help you. I'm going to encourage everybody to get a book. Hallelujah. This book changed my life. Hallelujah. It's called School of Money. It's a very expensive book. It's not cheap. Many books have changed my life. This is one of them. It significantly changed my life. I think it's about maybe seven, eight thousand, seven thousand or thereabouts. It's about seven thousand. This is expensive. But this may be one of the greatest investments. You It's not my book. Are you getting my point? I've been too blessed. You can sit down with this book and literally change your financial future. It's about 600 pages and none of the pages are useless. Trust me when I tell you this. It's a very, very powerful book. It was written by Olumide Emmanuel. One of my financial mentors. One of the people that has impacted my life truly. Hallelujah. 10 M's of money, Matthew Shimolo. Money will not make you rich. Money will not make you rich, Sonia Delaja. You can get the books with Jordan. Because of the cost, I, you can book with him if you want to. Jordan is our official. We don't have a bookstore. So for now, we're using Jordan to promote him and bless him. So you can book with him. I don't know how much. I think it should not be 7,000. All right. You can book with him. He can go and get it for you. Money will not make you rich on their delaja. The covenant of wealth, Bishop Oyedepo. You mustn't read all of them. Just write them. The covenant of wealth, Bishop Oyedepo. The law of prosperity, Kenneth Copeland. Three most important things, Mike Mudok. Three most important things, Mike Mudok. School of Money, the book I just showed you, Olumide Emmanuel. Olumide Emmanuel, School of Money. Blessed to be a blessing, Kenneth Copeland. Blessed to be a blessing, Kenneth Copeland. 
how to come out of debt they will debut me how to come out of debt David Ibiu me secrets of the richest man who ever lived Mike Modoc I'm not giving you any business books there are a number of business books that can help you okay let me just give two unfair advantage Robert Kiyosaki unfair advantage Robert Kiyosaki rats to riches r-a-t-s to riches you can get the videos i think they are free would have made it available the media but i don't know if rats to riches it will bless you it's not just one of these dog books rats to riches there are many more but this few will help you hallelujah lift your hands and bless the lord for tonight we give you all the praise hallelujah praise the lord now please keep standing before i make the altar call i'll just give pastor pete one minute you just say hi to the house and prophesy hallelujah he's my friend i love him celebrate him with this pastor please celebrate him inside and outside koinonia for us to get caught up by the euphoria and miss the principle you see when you follow a man you do not have to follow the personality of the man all you need to do to become like that man is to follow his principle he says I know that you are a wise and discreet man that's what the scripture says and he said and the spirit of God is in you you see wisdom is not head knowledge it is heart knowledge there's a difference so most times when we come we are hearers of the word but when we leave the most important key of leaving this place is to become a doer of god's word the bible says if you do not do you are deceiving yourself one version says you are fooling yourself i like the message translation it says you are cheating yourself praise the name of the lord very few preachers will teach you principles of getting out of poverty not just the anointing now there's an anointing for it but there are principles so that when you come out you will know the way out of that city you will know the road you can repeat the principle again and again if they pick you up you don't have to look for a man to lay hands on you or to pray for you or a prophet to prophesy into your destiny you just need the principle if i can get the principle i can change my life if i can get that principle i can change my life give me the principle just hand me over that principle what do you do to get you from here to there just tell me tell me one plus one is equals to two that's all i need if i can get it in my heart i will change my life i prophesy to you that you will not just be a hearer you will be a doer of god's word you will not just be excited about the message you go out there and you will do what the word says you should do as from today when you receive instruction from the spirit you will not forget you will not be like that man that looks in the mirror and forgets as from today you'll be a doer in the mighty name of jesus amen hallelujah now keep standing i want to give an opportunity to those who have never given their lives to christ listen um we believe in the salvation of souls and there are many people who probably are just coming here for the first time or others who have come and you've been struggling with a lot of things you've been struggling with sin you've been struggling with all kinds of habits and everything and some of you may have been born again at one time but sincerely you know that right now your standing is not right with god hallelujah i want to pray for you and i want to stand with you and lead you back to the cross and lead you back to jesus christ as I make that call, please, I want you to leave wherever you are, inside or outside. Don't wait for anyone. I'd like you to just come, take a bold step, and I'll pray with you. Right now, God bless you. God bless you. 
there are people like that god bless you please make sure you don't sit back inside and outside you've never given your heart to the lord or you have found yourself derailing god bless you they are coming appreciate them those of you coming god bless you don't wait for anybody you are the first person make sure you don't sit back if the lord is speaking to you inside and outside i know that there are people that need to make it right with jesus christ tonight we will wait for you hallelujah god bless you thank you for coming thank you for coming thank you for coming thank you for coming if there are still people outside please double up and come god bless you thank you thank you don't be ashamed the bible says whoever comes to me i will in no wise cast away this is the greatest miracle in this place tonight hallelujah praise the lord if you are still in the crowd just find your way as i pray for you thank you i salute your courage i want you to lift your right hand and pray after me say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i thank you for the gift of salvation today i denounce sin and satan and i accept jesus as lord of my life i confess that i receive eternal life in my spirit i am saved in the name of jesus holy spirit come and live in me make me a wonder to my generation in the name of jesus now let me pray with you father thank you so much because you brought these ones to bless them i honor you for what you have done in their lives you will preserve them in the name of jesus christ now please follow the ushers they'll have your details and they'll give you a few announcements god bless you thank you celebrate them koinonia hallelujah in a few minutes we'll be out of here please if you are worshiping with us for the first time we have a blessing a prayer and a prophecy for you i'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here quickly inside or outside if you, this is your first time thank you for coming thank you for coming god bless you please find your way to the front as i take the announcement don't sit back god brought you here you are special to us we want to bless you thank you koinonia celebrate them as they come thank you thank you thank you god bless you thank you for coming thank you for coming god bless you hallelujah keep coming no matter how far keep coming hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much for coming were you blessed tonight this is koinonia put together by eternity network international we bless god for what he's doing in this place and i assure you your life will never be the same in jesus name we pray that you will find hunger for the things of the spirit you will find wisdom you will find understanding of how this kingdom works hallelujah we want to pray and prophesy and bless you and we want you to receive it with all your heart saints of god stretch your hands and bless them prophesy we call you blessed we bless you with the hunger that we have here for spiritual things in the name of jesus we bless you with wisdom we bless you with passion for the things of the kingdom we bless you with grace in the name of jesus christ you're moving from glory to glory you will enjoy financial prosperity you will enjoy the hand of god in your life whatever sickness or challenge you came here with we declare that it leaves you this night in the name of jesus we celebrate you we thank you for coming in the name of jesus christ thank you so much please i'd like you to just walk follow that usher they'll give you a few informations and they'll have your details thank you for coming god bless you koinonia celebrate them one more time